Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool, and in this episode I want to show how to do rapid flambient blending. One of the hardest points of doing flambient is the speed. That's usually what's encountered. A lot of people say that it takes too long. Well, it doesn't if you do the right techniques. Now, you might have seen some past videos where I've shown how to do the flambient blending, how I've also showed how to do fast flambient, how to do 50-50, how to do actions. Those are things that can really help speed things up, but what I want to do here is narrow in on just a few quick things to show how you can do this extremely fast. It's going to be way faster than even doing HDR blending. So without further ado, let's get started. So I'm going to show two examples here. The first is just this very simple bedroom shot where we're going to be taking it from looking like this into this. The other is a more complex example where we're going to be shooting this more difficult area because it has a lot of shadow here, a lot of highlights over here, and we're going to turn it from this into this. Now this is done very quickly. Now if you've never done Flambient before, you've maybe seen other videos, I would recommend if you've never tried this before, download the ebook that I have on interior real estate photography to step-by-step -step instructions and also why you would use certain camera settings and whatnot. I'm not going to get into all those details here. I'm going to concentrate on this quick method to do this Flambient blending. So what I do suggest in all of my uh, making this a lot faster through all these various steps is use actions where you can and that's where this will come in also using an action. But let's just recap real quick what we have here. For the basic flambient blending we have an ambient shot. We have underneath of it then a flash shot with just one flash that was held near the camera, a very basic flambient. In this case for the flash shot I exposed for the outside. That allows me to add more ambient into it if I need to. I did shoot a window pole in case I need it for this case. It wouldn't be really all that necessary. But here what we want to do is if we press the action that I'm using, it would look like this. You're basically done at this point. You could just flatten it and then go back over to Lightroom and finish off with all the other post-processing presets. But let's back up here a minute. Let's see what that actually did. So all these layers were loaded in from Lightroom during the standard workflow. And that had just the standard pre-processing presets applied to them like I've shown in other videos and throughout the books. So what we want to do to start our action would be now. And what we want to do now is change, we want to have this uh, layer selected, the ambient layer, and we want to change its mode to luminosity. And then we want to change its opacity down to 50%. That gives us our 50-50 flambient. At this point you would stop your action. That's all you needed to do. This will get you by most of the time because of what I call the shoot toward window advantage that I talk about in my lighting guide. Let's back up a, a minute here so you can see what I'm talking about. So we had here, when this was in normal mode, and had all these awful colors, that's why we use luminosity mode to get rid of those colors and only use the light. But we've got a lot of light near the window. When we do the flash shot, we get a lot of light near the camera. So when you blend the two together in luminosity mode with 50% of the luminance coming from the ambient shot, and then 50% of it coming then from the flash shot, you have something that's fairly well evened out. Now, if you want to take this a little further and you don't like the blend of 50% and 50% between ambient and luminosity, then you simply do escape and V which will select your move tool so that you're not selecting a brush or other selection tool and you type a number on your keyboard. When you do that, it changes over here the opacity of the layer that was selected. So watch again, I'll hit Escape V and 9. You can see that that opacity went up to 90%. Escape V4, change that opacity over here once again to 40%. And Escape V7, Escape V5. Every time I press a number, it does that. Now, I could just right now keep pressing a number because I already have the Move tool selected. For instance, if I had the Brush tool selected, you can see I selected the brush tool by hitting B on my keyboard. If I were to type a number, it's going to be changing the opacity of the brush. And that's what's what happened up here. So that's why if I want to get that back to 100%, I want to hit Escape V to hit to make sure that I'm using the Move tool, which has no opacity settings. So now it'll just use the opacity setting for that layer. So Escape V6, Escape V5. Those are quick ways then to say, I just want to have this much blend. Either way, those are just quick ways to have a 50-50 or a 30-70 or whatever blend you want. 
If you find that you have too much ambient still in one place, that's when you could add a layer mask and delete some of it. And by the way, the window pull, if you did want to add that, and of course, that's this layer here. You've probably seen me do this before, but I have an action that also does that. Once I hit that action, it does the basics of moving it to the top, putting it into darken mode and adding a hide all layer mask. Then I can just take a polygon tool and just roughly anywhere I want. You can see I'm not hitting the window. Once I select that, I reverse my colors over here to black and white by hitting X and then press the delete key, hit X and reverse my colors back. And then I can just blend that in as I need to. A little bit too much here, then I just put that in, not a problem. When you erase some of it, take the eraser tool and erase some of that also. So this one really didn't need a window pull. It wasn't all that necessary. That's how it would look. There's also color correction techniques. For instance, one of my favorite ones that I've been using where I show the curves adjustment I do in mastering color was this one I just did with this, with this curves adjustment. And uh, so you can see it went from that to this. So a much better looking picture. All this was done with actions. The core of it was the 50-50 blending, which in itself, faster than HDR. So anyways, once again, once this was all done, it looked like this. Now let's move to our more complex example. So we have here this ambient shot and underneath of it, this was just a flash shot with the flash near camera. Now, I'm not a fan of this look because of the color problems that we'll get at the far end of the room. And yeah, we've got a shadow of the fan over here too. That'll go away with the next step. So you might have seen the color issues that come if you don't have this lit properly. I'll have a link to that also down in the description for the video on working with flambient and color. But what I've done instead, we're just not even going to use that layer. I went over here and I added another flash. You can see the bloom is way over here. So there's just a light on a stand. And what that's doing now, you can see that lit up that corner. So that's with it, that's without it. Now I've got this bloom here, so it's very simple. You've seen me do this, I don't know, maybe a hundred times in my other videos and also in the lighting guide. So I can walk over to the other side of the room and I just hand hold the flash, boom, that's good enough and I've got now something to fill in. So what I would do here, as you've seen before, I just go layer mask hide, take a brush and I'll just brush in. I'm gonna use 100% for now and I'll just tap some of this in there so that I don't have that. Change the flow to about 30% on the brush. Okay, so now I've got a fairly well even looking photo. If I wanted to also, I probably have some reflections in the glass over here. And once again, I can also brush those in if I want to. Now let's get to that 50-50 flambient and the challenges that we would face. So going up here to the ambient layer now to apply the 50-50 blending, this is where we'll start seeing an issue. So I've got this in normal mode. This is now our complete flash shot. Looks pretty good as these two are combined. But I've got this issue if I run that action on there, it's okay. I, if I start changing some of that opacity, it just gets kind of worse. So we can keep it at 50-50 flambient, whatever looks natural. And I'm going to show a trick here to fix that. But first, let's do that window pull. And once again, I'll just apply my action to do what needs to be done, which is moving that window pull layer to the top, turning it into a darkened blending mode, and then having this hide all layer mask. I'm just going to use a brush at about 30% flow and just brush in a few things here just real quick to, to make that window pull come out. Okay, so at this point, that's fine, and I could apply some of the other color techniques, but what I want to do is I want to add something in the corner here. Now, a, a very simple way to do that, you could flatten the layer, you could take it over into Lightroom. I'm going to show how to do it in Photoshop using Adobe Camera Raw. It's basically the same thing. What I'm going to do is with the top layer selected, I'm going to do Control Alt Shift E. That makes one layer. I could turn off all the other layers now if I want. We're just working with one single layer, but I'll leave that on. Now let's take that into Camera Raw Filter. Now Camera Raw Filter, once again, is basically Lightroom. Now this is a newer version, so it has up here masking instead of a brush. But what we're going to do is we want to use a brush. So under masking, I'm going to select brush. And it's a little bit different in these newer versions of Adobe Camera Raw in that what I want to do is I want to use a brush that has high shadows and high whites. And that's what that is. Now, if you notice on the brush here, there's a lot of feathering. So the size is okay, but it has a lot of feathering. In that corner, you just want to start tapping that dark corner so that you get 
that corner lit up. It's going to feather it off really nicely. Now, you really can at this point, especially if you're using Photoshop, you can increase those shadows a lot. Let's see what happened. Let's click OK. So now it turned it into this. Now, that's pretty bright over there. So this is very simple. All you need to do is reduce the opacity of that layer. You just start reducing it down to where it's like, well, maybe that looks pretty good at about 76 opacity. I could also use that Escape V trick, Escape V7, Escape V5, and change that layer's opacity. And what this layer did now, let's take a look. Here's with it. Here's without it. Here's with it and here's without it. And there's a lot of stuff we could do. I'd probably put, you know, a black uh, gradient over this TV here. Might want to clean up the window poles a little bit. But once again, that's all that it took to do this all together. Now, if you were to do HDR, once again, you would have this same issue. There's no way, since it was so dark back there, that you're going to be able to bring up much in the way of shadows. This turns into a more impactful picture. And of course, when we were done, it looked like this. So by using the right techniques with not always worrying about painting everything in, don't concentrate on doing too much work when it comes to some of the bedrooms and the bathrooms. Those will already be lit fairly natural from the ambient light and just need to have that ambient layer and luminosity mode set to probably about 50%. So consider these as other tools in your bag of tricks as you do your editing for Flambient. Anyways, I hope this video was useful for you and that you can use some of this in your photography as well. If you did like this video and you want to see more, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. <laughs> it won't cost you anything. And as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.